Good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to STEM Alive for Kids for National Science Week 2021. Big shout out, of course, to the Department of Education and Peter Underwood Centre for making this possible. And a good But anyway, <coughs> welcome, yes, of course, to STEM Alive for Kids. Kids, today we've got a really, really interesting topic for you. So I hope you're all strapped in, buckled up, and only using half your chair because that's how much of it you'll need. You'll be on the edge of it. Exciting! We have with us a special guest today. <coughs> Please allow me to present to you the wonderful Shasta Henry. Woo! Hello, Shasta. How are you? Hi, Sam. Hi everyone there in the classrooms. It is so exciting to be here to share my study subject Ooh. with you guys for National Science Week. And what, what, pray tell, Shasta from uh, the Tasmanian School of Biogeography, would that be? Can you guess? Ooh. Do you think the children know? I don't know. Hmm. I study hmm. insects. Oh. I study all the different kinds of insects. I do study in the geography department, which because I study how insects are building blocks mm. of ecosystems. So just like plants, uh, just like rocks, pieces of landscape, and the way that all living things fit together. Yeah. And the living things that I focus on are insects. I'm an entomologist. <gasps> Is that like the person who does x-rays? No. Oh, that's a different thing. No need to x-ray insects because their bones are on the outside. Ah, that makes sense. That <laughs> makes sense. There you go. So I believe you've uh, presented or going to present a very interesting little talk to us today. Is that right? Absolutely. So Ooh. the theme of all of National Science Week mm. is food. Mm -hmm. and so I'm going to be talking about insects and food mm. and insects as food. So you can eat insects. You can eat insects. Interesting, interesting. Well, what do you think? Should we jump straight into it? I'm ready, if you're ready. Let's go. Whoa, what have we got here? So you can see a lot of insects here on my opening screen. These are all the kinds of insects that I study. Mm. Butterflies, beetles, wasps, ants. And these are all the different kinds of insects that are also food. <laughs> hey. But we're not going to start with eating insects. We oh. might start somewhere a little bit more normal. Mm. So what about some of these kinds of foods? How about mm. you there in the classroom? Put your hand up if you like mandarin oranges or orange juice. What about lemon-flavoured fizzy cordial or sweets? And how do you feel about bees? Because if you like these citrus fruits, mm. I can tell you that they are mm. brought to you thanks to bees. Our sponsor, Bees. Thank you very much, Bees, for supporting us in STEM Alive for Kids. Bees and lots of other flying types of insects drink nectar out of flowers. It's like a sweet cordial for insects. Mm. And when they land on the flower, they get part of the flower on them. It's called pollen. Then when they fly to another flower, they exchange pollen between flowers. And this is what turns a flower into a fruit. So Ooh. lots of the fruits that we eat are brought to us thanks to bees and other pollinating insects. So they fly from one flower to another and then cover themselves in pollen mm -hmm. and then take that pollen and swap it out and accidentally mix it up. Accidentally mix it up. And this oh. is how flowers turn into fruit. Mm. So this is a chocolate flower, mm. which sounds pretty good. Mm. And the fruit that it turns into is a bean and it's mm. called the cocoa bean. Mm. And cocoa beans give us the brown chocolatey flavor that is in chocolate. Mm -hmm. but these flowers are very small, They're only about one centimeter big or the size of a square of a piece of chocolate. And a honeybee is mm. too big to land on this flower. So we need an even smaller kind of flying insect. How mm. do you feel about mosquitoes, Sam? Oh, they're a very, very interesting creature, I are gotta they say. As, are they as good as chocolate? I mean, oh, I do like chocolate, you know. So you have to leave some space in your heart for mosquitoes because it's a tiny flying insect mm. like a mosquito that pollinates the chocolate flower, turns into the cocoa bean, and wow. gives us chocolate. 
So it's not just bees that do pollinating. It actually can be other insects as well. Lots of different types of insects. There are wow. so many different kinds of insects mm. and different types of insects in different parts of the world mm. uh, that they're involved in practically every part of our life. Wow. So they make the food that we eat. All of Ooh. these other kinds of foods as well are thanks to flying insect pollinators. Practically every ingredient in a taco, mm -hmm. strawberries, apple juice, and of course, honey, which comes straight from honeybees. That's fascinating. Look at that. So there's a lot of food that if we didn't have all these little pollinators and insects around for, we just wouldn't have it all. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So our food itself comes from insects. Mm. But insects are also food for other animals. This is a Tasmanian microbat. It is oh. a super tiny little bat. We have a few different species in Tasmania. Hmm. Because they are so small, they have to eat animals that are even smaller than they are. And that is insects. Hmm. Also, this beautiful little bird Ooh. and lots of the tiny birds that live in Tasmania. This is called a silver eye. It's hmm. one of my favourite. They fly around in big flocks. And they land in trees, hop up and down and peck the insects off of the trees. Ooh. And you might have seen one Yay. of these before. This is a little metallic skink. And of course, they are also very small and they have to eat things that are small enough to fit inside their mouth. And that is insects. Oh, wow. So we, all these animals also rely on insects, almost like we rely on the insects too. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And even some plants Ugh. eat insects. Have you ever seen a Venus flytrap before? It's a type of plant that will close over an insect and digest it, just like your stomach does. The one in red is called mm. a sundew. That's a type of Tasmanian carnivorous plant. It eats insects as well. Wow. And why would a plant, or why would anyone want to eat an insect? Mm. Well, insects are animals. Just the same way that cows and pigs and chickens are animals. And so even though they are very different shapes, they have all the same building blocks that make up their bodies. When we eat the bodies of cows, we get energy and protein and nutrients. And when a plant eats a fly, they get protein and energy and nutrients. So it's nutrition, which is why mm. people would want to eat insects or plants would want to eat insects or a lizard would want to eat an insect vitamins minerals fats proteins these are the building blocks that build our bodies interesting interesting so you would be familiar with some of the animals on this chart mm -hmm. usually the vertebrates they are animals that have bones and on the other side of the chart, we have the other group of animals that have no bones. You've probably seen a worm before mm -hmm. or a snail. So birds have bones. Mm -hmm. Cows and cats and dogs and people are mammals and we all have bones. There are bones inside of us right now. And fish have bones. You have to be careful sometimes when you're eating fish because they can have bones that we can't chew up with our teeth. And a worm is an animal that has no bones. So is a snail. And so mm. is an insect. Mm. Now we are familiar with more kinds of food animals from the animals that have bones side. Mm. If you get a whole roast chicken, you will find some of the bird bones inside of it. We take all of the bones out to grind um, hamburger patties make them nice and soft and of course fish fingers don't have bones in them anymore mm. either because it's far easier for us to eat food that is soft mm. you might have eaten some of the kinds of food from the animals with no bones side of the chart as well mm. crustaceans is another word for crabs mm. and crabs also means prawns and crayfish so lots of seafood are animals that have no bones. Hmm. Has anyone who's listening ever eaten a prawn before? And it works exactly the same way for those animals that eat insects. Hmm. 
Insects are a type of animal with no bones and they are good food in just the same way that all of these other kinds of foods are. Remember, it's full of nutrition and energy that helps our bodies grow. Mm. And so hopefully you're ready to hear me say that people can eat insects if they want to as well. Yeah. Anyone in your class eaten an insect before? You can put your hands up. It's all right. You can raise your hands if you want. We can see some pictures here. There's a person who's eating a uh, chocolatey insect bar, mm -hmm. and the insects in that would be crispy and crunchy, just like rice bubble crisps. Mm. Or you can uh, toast them up, make them crispy, and put savory seasoning on, Ooh. and they are a lot like chips. Mm. And I'm going to prove this to you. Oh, because how? I have some insects with me today that I'm going to eat. So I got these Ooh. at a shop mm -hmm. in America. It's not as easy to buy insects in Australia at the moment because it's not as normal here. But it's very normal to eat insects in other countries. Mm. In Thailand, children last night would have gone home after school and they put out cricket traps and they catch crickets overnight oh. while they're doing their homework mm. and then while they're sleeping. And when they get up in the morning, they collect their cricket trap full of crickets and they take it to school, give all of their crickets to their principal and their principal cooks them for school lunch and everyone has crickets together at lunchtime. Now you might never have heard of that before, mm -hmm. but it is very normal in lots of other countries. So Sam and I are gonna eat a piece of these crickets. Oh boy. Now these ones aren't sweet. These ones have got savory flavors like chips. And just mm. in the same way that chips don't usually taste much like potato, they taste like flavoring. These mm. ones are going to taste like bacon and cheese. Ooh, do you like good. bacon and cheese, Sam? I must say I do like bacon and cheese. I have got a cricket here. You oh, can have a leg. I'm gonna have a delicious, gonna have a handful of handful of legs. I'm just going to go all out. Can I have all of them? You can have all be, of them. You need to chew them properly though. All right. Okay. Here we go. Let's give it a try. You know, this will give me a leg up. <laughs> <laughs> and it tastes mostly like the flavoring that yeah. is on the cricket. Bacon it's kind of got a, uh, it's sort of got a crispy kind of light, fluffy peanut almost sort of texture. Yeah. A little mm. bit like a peanut, a little bit like a Rice Krispie. Mm. We eat lots of foods every day that are quite a lot like insects, even though we haven't eaten insects before. Interesting. So maybe next time you get the chance, mm. you could uh, say yes to an insect. You can be just like those other children all over the world. You can have insects too. That does sound mighty, mighty, mighty tasty. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jester. So once we've once we've eaten all the insects, what what happens afterwards once we start digesting all the insects? Well, when we eat insects, just like any other type of food, they mm. go into our stomach mm. and they come out the other end as poo. Oh. And when we eat soft food and mm. we chew it up with our teeth, it goes into our stomach as little bits and it comes out the other end. Mm. Nice and nice and comfortable and easy. But mm. of course, this picture here, there's a whole chicken leg in that person's stomach. That's not that's not how eating works, is it? They wouldn't put the bone in their stomach. That. That's too hard for you to digest and it wouldn't come out the other end. Oof. So we chew food up with our teeth and mm -hmm. turn it into small parts first. But as I said at the beginning, mm. insects don't have bones on the inside. Mm. They have their hard part of their body on the outside. And birds that do a lot of eating of insects don't have teeth to chew them up with. So we will actually often find pieces of insects in animal poo. Mm. And we can often identify what kind of animal the poo comes from. And we can also identify what kinds of things those animals have been eating. So you can actually oh. use poo for science. So this is what's called a magpie pellet. This mm. magpie has eaten a bunch of insects. Mm -hmm. It's got mealworms in its beak there, but I can see from this magpie pellet that it's mm. actually eaten a Christmas beetle. 
Mm. I found this in December around Christmas time when there was lots of Christmas beetles out and about and so lots of animals will be eating them. Mm. And you can see those shiny green pieces in the magpie pellet, which are bits of hard insect from the outside that couldn't be turned into food and energy. And so they've come back out the other end. Interesting. Interesting. This is an owl pellet. Owls are quite a big bird, Mm. and so they are able to take great big gulps of food. There's actually two skulls, two bones, two head bones from little mice here. So owls need lots of energy, and they eat a lot of meat to get that energy. But you can't digest bone, and so the whole bone has to come back out again. And can you see the big shiny insect casing that Mm. is in this owl pellet what is it do we know it's a type of beetle beetles Mm -hmm. have hard shell wings on the outside Mm -hmm. and i could identify this beetle uh, from this owl pellet although i don't know off the top of my head but if this Mm -hmm. beetle was only found in one particular place this is why i work in the geography department i would then know where this owl went to feed and Mm -hmm. where it found that beetle. Interesting, interesting. This is another Tasmanian species. This is an animal called a quoll, and quolls eat meat and vegetables, just like we do. And I can see that from this quoll poo. It's got some tiny little bones from a very small animal that it must have eaten. It's also got some seeds, so it's eaten some fruit, and it's got a seed inside of its poo too hard to digest Mm. and you can see you might not recognize it but i know a lot about insects and so Mm. i recognize that piece of insect shell shiny and black Mm. and plated and that's the thing that makes my brain go oh this quoll has eaten some insects is it a slater no i think it is the underside part Mm. of an insect so if you flipped a beetle over Mm. it gets shiny plates on the underside as well Interesting. And there is a type of Australian animal that only eats insects, and that is the echidna. Echidnas have very tiny mouths, just at the very end of what we call their beak. And so they can only fit tiny things in their mouth, Mm. just like that. Just like that. It'd be like eating all of your food through a drinking straw. And so echidnas only eat ants. Mm. And... Scientists were able to identify five different species of ants Mm. from the body parts in this echidna poo. Oh, wow. And so with information like that, we can look at the environment and we can say, are all of those types of ants here? Maybe we want echidnas to come and live in a particular place. Mm. We can look around, we can measure the ants and we can say, is this a good place for echidnas to come and live. And Mm -hmm. so those are some of the ways that we can use insects Mm -hmm. in poo to Mm. do study science on other larger kinds of animals. And so the organizers of National Science (gasps) Week have got an experiment that you'll be able to do at home or in your classroom. Mm. And it is about taking food and turning it into fake poo in your classroom. So we've got some video instructions that we're going to play for you now. And after that, Sam and I are going to answer some of your questions about insects and food and poo. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. You took the words right out of my mouth. Take a minute to watch the video at home, everyone, or at school, and make sure you get some questions ready for us about anything that you've heard so far. We look forward to answering them. So what do you think? Let's jump into the video. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's see what poo's made of. We're going to show you what happens to our food from the moment we put it in our mouths until it comes out our bottom. Actually, the correct word is anus. It comes out through our anus as poo. Yucky, right? We're going to do this right here on this table using this equipment. Each piece of equipment represents a part of our body. The bowl is my mouth. The scissors are my front teeth for biting the food. And the potato masher represents my back teeth for chewing and grinding the food. Now, let's eat the food. First, I'm going to take a bite of my food. Then I will chew it up in my mouth. While I'm chewing and rolling the food in my mouth, 
the food is actually mixing with saliva. Not only is saliva helping me moisten the food, it actually contains special chemicals that help break down the food. I might have a glass of water to make it easy for me to swallow. I don't want to choke up my food, so a lot of chewing going on. I think I'm ready to swallow now. From my mouth, where does the chewed up food go? That's right, into my stomach, through the esophagus. That's the tube connecting my mouth to my stomach. This plastic tube represents the esophagus and the Ziploc bag here is my stomach. Swallowing is hard, I should have chewed my food a lot. Of course, my esophagus is not as stiff as the plastic tube. To help it go down, I will push it through with the back of the spoon. Now it is in my stomach. What happens here? The food is broken down some more. Our stomachs contain more food breaking down chemicals. What are they called again? Enzymes. That's right. The food breaking down chemicals here work best with a bit of acid. So let's make my tummy acid by adding some vinegar. Yes, vinegar is an acid. Food is broken down here some more. The walls of my stomach squeeze the food. Sometimes it even makes a noise like when your tummy is rumbling. I think the broken down food is ready to travel to the intestines. Do you know that the intestines are as long as this classroom? What? Even longer? Now look what's happening here. The liquid is slipping through these intestines. Our intestines have tiny little holes that let the nutrients out into our blood. Nutrients are carried to the rest of our body to give us energy and build muscles. Nutrients are the good parts of the food that our bodies need. The nutrients are now going into the bloodstream. Yes, more nutrients in the bloodstream. Once all the nutrients are gone. Finally, what comes out our anus? Poo. That's some serious poo right there. I should have drunk more water. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning about how food travels through our bodies. Oh, hey, 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 how was that? How delicious was that looking? Or maybe not very delicious looking at all. Did you learn something? Maybe you've got some questions to ask. And if you do, I'm glad. Because we're going to go to a very short interval and you can all chat amongst yourselves and your teacher can help you out as well and come up with some questions that you'd like to ask. Don't forget, include your name and school so that we can give you a shout out and uh, let everyone know who's asking the big brain questions. So, a five minute interval, and uh, we're gonna get back to enjoying our insects in the meantime. See you soon. Yeah. We have so, so many fantastic so questions. Excited. I know, this is the best part of the whole thing. So, thank you all, of course, for sending in your questions. We're going to have a look at all of them, and we're going to answer all of them. Maybe not live here today, but don't worry. If you send in your questions, we will answer them, and we'll send them back to your teacher, and you'll be able to have a look at all the answers, which is pretty exciting. So, what do you think, Shasta? Should we get stuck in? I am so ready. I'm so full of answers. Okay, so full of antsies. So like. full of ant. <laughs> hey Sam. Yes. Why do echidnas never get sick? Why do echidnas never get sick? Because they're full of little antibodies. <laughs> Don't worry, we will be here all week, everybody, so you can tune on in. Come on back. There you go. Alrighty. So <laughs> one of the first questions we have off the ranks here is uh, from Mrs. Singleton and Max. Are from Catholic Education Tasmania. 
who ask, is a spider, which is an arachnid, also an insect? So spiders are not insects. Mm. All organisms, all animals have a shopping list of body parts mm -hmm. that make them what they are. Mm. So you might know part of these answers already. Okay. We know that insects have six legs. Six. And you might know how many legs a spider has. It is eight. So to be an insect, something has to have six legs. Mm -hmm. And so a spider can't be an insect. Mm -hmm. It is, like you said, an arachnid. Mm -hmm. But they are all from that no bones side of the table. They are all invertebrates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's where their bones are on the outside. Yep. Fascinating. There you go. I mean, spiders are just land crabs, really, when you think about it. Um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Richards asks, and this is a very interesting one, mm -hmm. do insects sleep and is there an app uh, that you can get, like an app on your phone or mm -hmm. a tablet, uh, that you can use to ID an insect? So that was a bit of a double barrel question. So do insects sleep? Do they take little insect naps? Insects do sleep. Uh, mm. Insects will often have a active time of day and a resting time of day, just like we do. Lots of them come out during the day, like mm. butterflies and beetles. But then to reduce competition so that there's not a big insect traffic jam mm. and everyone's trying to live at the same time, uh, we also often have like moths. Mm. I like butterflies, but they come out at night. Mm. They rest and sleep during the day. Fascinating. Uh, and apps. I don't know any off the top of my head. I know that there are lots of good books that you can buy uh, from places like the CSIRO. You can probably get them at the museum, mm. which have lots of pictures. They're called field guides for helping mm. you identify insects in the field. And there are apps a lot like that that are being developed. One of the problems is mm. that there are so many different types of insects. You would need a book this big to have all of the photographs. So often you'll find an insect that you cannot see picture of mm. and in places like Tasmania there's actually lots and lots of insects that don't have names and don't have pictures yet okay. so there's a bit of a knowledge gap there but yes there are lots of resources that will help you start learning to identify the insects around you that's pretty exciting so we can expect a Tasmanian insect pokedex soon Absolutely. And if anyone wants to send me questions mm. and especially pictures at my Bug Girl Facebook page, I love getting your questions throughout the year. So don't be afraid to drop me a line. Fantastic. And we'll, we'll be putting that up, don't worry, in the emails and later on. So you'll be able to send your pictures directly to Shasta. Another one comes from uh, John Paul, which is, uh, is animal poo called scat? Yes. All poo is called scat, and often when we're out in the field as scientists, we don't say that we study poo, not all the time. Yes, we often call it scat. Mm. And so a type of animal identification in the landscape that we use is called scats and tracks. We look for the things that animals leave behind. So mm. uh, Tasmanian devils have different kinds of tracks and scats, different kinds of poo than Quolls do mm. than echidnas do, so you can actually count insect, um, count animals, and study them when they're not even there using these different kinds of signs. Yes, scat is another word for poo, and it's also a form of music where you go skip it about poop up do do da skilly da da poo. There you go, but don't get those two mixed up because if you go to the opening night and you know you just have a bunch of animal scats, I don't think it'll go down too well. It'd be one heck of an instrument though, wouldn't it? So. Moving along, we have one from Owen at Lindisfarne North Primary School, which is, and I believe this one's for you, Shasta, what is your favourite insect to eat? My favourite insect mm. to eat is crickets. Mm. So the ones that we had before, Sam. Mm. I haven't eaten a lot of insects. It's not usual in my culture. Mm. I live in Australia. And so it's only very recently that I've been able to find insects that I can buy and mm. try. But I've had mealworms, which mm. are extra crispy. 
and I don't mind, but my favourite are the crickets, and lots of people's favourites are crickets. Mm. In Thailand, actually, this is the type of cricket that is farmed, even though there are lots of types of native cricket in mm. Thailand, these ones taste the best, and so for places that um, grow crickets on a farm, just mm. like growing sheep on a farm, it is this type of cricket. Now, of course, these ones taste like salt and vinegar, which is fine too, but these crickets have a really nice flavour just mm. on their own. Mm -hmm. A little bit like a Rice Krispie and a little bit like a peanut. I could just eat them, eat them all day. Easy peasy, just like snacks, but yeah. you can't eat only snacks. You have to eat vegetables and drink water and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I suppose, I suppose. I suppose. But bugs are pretty, insects are pretty nutritious though. Like what are some of the, some of the nutritional values that you can get out of an insect? Eating crickets, mm. if I was eating little pieces of beef or chicken, insects actually have more iron in them to yeah. make my bones strong mm. uh, and more calcium in them to make my bones strong than those other kinds of meats that we normally eat. Mm. Because you're eating the bones on the outside of the insect, mm. uh, you're eating the whole thing, they have more fibre, so mm. normal meat doesn't have any fiber mm. and that makes your poo work really well mm. and they also have more minerals and uh and things and less fat than mm. eating regular meat so it's uh insects are just better than cows that's that's what i have to say so we can either shrink cows down until they're really really small and put a suit of armor on them or maybe we should just expand crickets until they're the size of cows I could get a whole a whole cricket this size, and then I wouldn't okay. have to eat so many. I could just have one at a time. Much, much more satisfying. Much more satisfying. Yeah, I could see you being a, an insect rancher, walking around <laughs> on the thing, hat, yeah. you know, riding the stag beetle into the sunset. Yeah, exactly. Hey, maybe that's what you should do at school, everyone. See if you can get your own little insect, you know, farmstead. That'd be pretty exciting. I can well, see a, new, a whole new game taking place in uh, so. the imagination corner this afternoon, Sam. Yeah, it sounds exciting. Insect farmer. Insect farmer. Yep, just here on the farm with the insects. Now, this one comes from uh, Danica at Havenview Primary, and this is a very, I think this is a very important one. Mm -hmm. What types of insects can we eat? Because I would assume that there are some insects that we probably shouldn't eat. Absolutely. There are, let's say, this many types of insects mm. in the world. The number is actually 2 million. Wow. And we know at the moment, mm -hmm. of the ones that we've checked, there are about 2,000 types of edible insects. Wow. And so just like different people live in different countries, different types of insects live in those different countries too. So we have a different group of insects that live in Australia compared to those insects that live in Thailand or live in India or live in America. And in each of those different countries, they've got uh, different types of insects that are edible and different group of insects that are inedible. So if you remember the difference between those two numbers, more insects shouldn't be eaten. And there are, but there's still a lot, 2,000 is a mm. lot of insects that we know that we can eat. And also sometimes we don't eat insects in different stages of their life. Like mm. a butterfly, not very good to eat. The wings are very papery, it'd be like having tissue paper in And they have mouth. that weird fluffy sort of little filament when you, yeah. When yeah. you touch them and you shouldn't touch their wings. Yeah. When you do, it gets that little... It's like the outside of a kiwi fruit, which yeah. is not as nice to eat. But caterpillars, mm. which are filling their bodies up with fats and turning lots of um, sort of lettuce leaves mm. into caterpillar body, just like a, uh, a sheep grazing on grass mm. does, caterpillars are way better mm -hmm. to eat. So we also have different preferences and um, different ways of preparing insects, just like regular food. So out of those 2,000, say, that we can eat, that we know of just, just so far, yep. there are actually different stages within their life that each one of them could potentially be eaten at. You know, sometimes only one stage, sometimes maybe even three stages. Yep, yep. Like a witchetty grub that mm. you might have heard of, which is a traditional food of Aboriginal Australian people. Mm. Witchetty grubs come out of um, tree stumps and they're soft and they're very good to eat full of fat and mm. protein. But witchetty grubs grow up 
just like a caterpillar into a butterfly, to turn into beetles. Mm. And then they've got all of those hard parts on the outside, like we saw in the animal poo. They don't mm. um, soak into our stomach, and they all come out as leftovers. And so mm. it makes far more sense to eat a witchetty grub than to eat the beetle that it turns into. The witchetty beetle. <laughs> That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Um, now, here's another one, touching mm -hmm. on can we eat them. So... Are snails an insect, and can you eat them? This one is from uh, this is from Jace from Birdport Primary. So, can are snails an insect? I'm going to say no because they have no legs. Is that close? Yes, snails mm. don't have six legs, six so legs. they can't be an insect. Mm -hmm. But they do come from that same side of the table. They are an animal with no bones. Mm. They are an invertebrate. They have mm. no vertebrae. Uh, and you can eat them. It's not as common in Australia, but in France, mm. it is really common to eat snails. They put garlic butter on them. If you've ever had garlic bread, mm. it's that same kind of flavor. <laughs> and they take the snails out of their shells and they make sure that they've eaten only yummy lettuce mm. in their stomachs. And then you can prepare them a lot like we do with our other kinds of seafood, like I said, with our prawns and things. So yes, people do eat snails, mm -hmm. and no, they are not insects, but they are invertebrates. Very interesting. I believe that's, a, I believe that's the uh, escargot or what have you, I think is what yes. they call it. Very, yes. very interesting. And I suppose this opens up a very interesting uh, topic and a, a particular point maybe that we should touch on, which is that... Sh it is probably at the moment not a good idea, as delicious as all these things may be, for you to go out right now at school and, you know, eat the insects you just find lying around. No. Please don't do that because usually, if I'm correct, Shasta, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a process by which edible insects for us, for humans, are usually made. Yes, yes, uh -huh. absolutely. Did you know that chewing gum it comes from the sap of the rubber tree? Oh. But mm. if I tell you that, hopefully you're not going to go out into the playground and put trees in your mouth. I generally don't chew on tyres. No, no, no. no, because it is different from chewing gum. And that mm. is the same. Even though you're going to see insects in the playground, mm. they are different than the insects which have been prepared, mm. packaged up, cleaned and mm. flavoured. Mm. So... Yes, don't eat things that you find in the backyard is the moral of this story. But do study them, do yes. take pictures of them, and do send them to Shasta yes. so that we can, like, analyse them exactly, just like that. We can be like, hmm, what's this one exactly? See? He loves insects. It's great. Now, let's have a look here. Now, again, we might not be able to get through to all the questions today. Uh, however, let's see if we can get just a couple through here. Now, this is a good one. So... Here we go. So here's one from Harrison at Havenview Primary. So this ties back into what we were talking about before, about the spiders. Mm -hmm. Can we eat any spiders? So they're not an insect because they have eight legs, eight legs. There we go. And can we eat them, though? But yes, you can eat spiders mm. in the same way that there are a group of insects that you can eat. There's a group of spiders that you can eat. I have seen in a documentary um, footage from Cambodia, so mm. another country in Southeast Asia, uh, where children get up in the morning and they go spider hunting. Now you might think that sounds a bit scary, mm. uh, but they are very familiar with what they're doing. So they go out and they dig tarantulas out of the ground and catch them and bring them home. Mum cooks them on the barbecue, kind of like having a, uh, you know, a fry up on the yeah. weekend. And it's actually really good that they have tarantulas to eat because tarantulas mm. are really high in an element called zinc. And zinc is really important for the growing of young bodies. So you're getting zinc from your lots of different types of food, but in Cambodia, mm. it is a little less available. And so eating a tarantula is actually one of the best things you could do to help your body grow. Wow, that's fascinating. And there'd be so many different kinds of spiders as well. So yes. you'd have to be very careful that it's this tarantula and not this tarantula. And it's not like a funnel web that just makes its home in your mouth or something horrible like that. <laughs> something horrible like that. There you go. 
Now, it looks as though, unfortunately, everyone, we're very rapidly drawing to a close, but we'll finish on this very interesting question here, I think. So here we go. So this will be our last question for this live presentation. But don't forget, all will be answered and uh, you'll know about it. I'll trust you. Don't worry. Now, this one comes from Haley at Somerdale Primary School. And she asks, and this is interesting. Remember yesterday's talk? Let's have a think about that. Can any insects be turned into fuel for energy to power cars or perhaps anything else? That is a wonderful question, Haley, and mm. the answer is yes. The same fats that we take into our bodies and make us grow and mm. make us strong, fat is a kind of oil and oil can be burned. Mm. So yes, some insects are actually so rich in fat they're not actually very healthy to eat. And so some people grind them up into powder and extract the protein mm. as animal food. And you've got all of this fat left over, which can be turned into biodiesel, which is mixing a thing that burns called ethanol with the fat. And so fly maggots or maybe fly caterpillars mm. can be turned into a biodiesel that will mm. fuel your car to take you to school in the morning. So yes, some insects even will make fuel for the machines in our world. That is so, so cool. So That's how useful insects are. I they mean, can, they, they can, any, they can, I could solve any problem with insects, I, I mean, reckon. I, I look forward to having clothing made exclusively out of insects. Then again, I guess silk is made out of a, out of a silk worm, which then turns into a, a silk butterfly, silk moth. Silk moth, been there, done silk that. Moth. There you go. Problem See, solved. I've had a spider hat before if you tuned into one of our other shows. <laughs> so you'll know that I've worn a spider hat. There you go. Shasta, thank you so much for coming on today. And it's been a really enlightening and fascinating experience. I think that I'm going to go out and see if I can buy some insects to eat myself because they're just that tasty. And I think that uh, I can feel the nutrition already. I feel stronger. It's superpowers, really. Yes. It's yes. very exciting. And, of course, tune in tomorrow and we will have uh, Shasta is coming back to give a different talk. It'll be very, very fascinating as well touching on foods and insects again, but if you're interested, it will be a little bit more complicated. But most importantly, thank you to all the little witchetty grubs, insects and slaters watching out there in classrooms all across Tasmania, and we look forward to seeing you next time. This has been STEM Alive for Kids for National Science Week 2021. Don't eat the bugs in your backyard, but don't be scared of that spider in your mum's car. Have a good one.